Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today, what I decided to do for you guys is a makeup 101, like informational type thing. So what I have in front of me is basically everything that you need to know and everything that you need to use to get a basic face. So we're not going to do like the flawless beat, but this is just like everyday makeup, something natural. If you're just going into getting makeup or just exploring makeup, these are your base items that you need to build your foundation on. So first we're going to talk about primers because you always have to prepare the skin for your makeup and that's after you wash and moisturize your skin. But at this moment, I've really been liking using the Milk of Magnesia as a primer. So what I do is I just, I'm basically just dipping my finger in and patting it along my skin. And I just get this along my T-zone and then just pat it out and spread it out. And you really don't need a lot. Like I've seen other people like put a whole bunch. For me, you don't need a lot. And I have oily skin. So um, I really focus this on my, on the places that I get really oily. And that is my T-zone area. And it's okay if it leaves like little white markies. Um, another primer that uh, I heard it's okay or I heard it's good is the e.l.f. primer. They have primers for um, oily skin, illuminating primers. I haven't used it yet. I think I am going to just go and buy it just to see how I like it. But I've seen a lot of good reviews. And you just want to keep on patting until it gets a little tacky. Okay. So next um, is foundation. And depending on what your skin type is, oily, dry, or a combination of oily and dry will depend on what foundations that you need. So for the summer months, I've been really loving the L'Oreal Infamable Foundation as well as the Black Opal True Color Foundation. Both of these foundations are for oily skin because my skin is more oily than it is dry. But if your skin is very dry, you want something that has a lot of moisture in it. So maybe the um, Maybelline has great foundation. I actually bought one of their foundations by mistake. Um, the Better Than Skin or Skin Like Foundation, something like that. I'll have a picture of what it's called. But... Um, that foundation is great coverage, looks amazing, but with my oily skin and that much illuminating moisture that that foundation had, it just made my skin look awful. So, um, just know your skin type. And it's basically just a trial and error. So if you see your skin, your natural skin throughout the day get a lot, it gets greasy or if you notice your skin is you know dry then that will determine what kind of foundation that you need so when I'm applying my foundation I really like to use a beauty blender and this is the real techniques beauty blender that you can find in Walmart Ulta um, beauty supply store you can get this kind of anywhere and I also like to use a small stippling brush so this is the elf stippling brush and it's dirty but basically this is great for foundation because of the tip if you can see these little spiky things that comes out of the brush it's really great for applying foundation but mostly i use the beauty blender for my foundation and the best way to do it is put your foundation on the back of your hand so you won't get a lot at the beauty blender and then just go to town so with the beauty blender you just want to continue pat motions you never want to swipe you always want to pat swiping will lead to um, little marks in your foundation will separate it'll just be a hot mess 
So always pat and always make sure you bring your foundation down towards your neck so you don't have that line of demarcation because that's not cute neither. Okay, so once you're satisfied with all of the blending and you make sure you haven't missed any spots, so very satisfied. Next, we are going to go on to the eyes. So, for mascara, I have been reaching for my L'Oreal Telescopic. It's always, always going to be my favorite. I have the brown and the black. And then a new one, I have the CoverGirl Fibers, Super Fibers Mascara. I did a review on this a couple weeks back, so I'll link the review down below just in case you want to get my few very um, detailed opinion about this. But um, my absolute favorite is always going to be the Telescopic. So for mascara, there's thousands of mascaras that you can buy. What I like in a uh, mascara brush since my eyelashes are really really wild i like a small teeny tiny mascara brush that can grab all of my lashes and it will separate and give me volume so and this is what the telescopic l'oreal does and then just to see the covergirl it's the same kind of lash um, wand it's tiny and it has tiny bristles to grab all of your lashes today I'm just gonna use my um, what is this telescopic L'Oreal because the covergirl mascara is kind of hard to get off so I don't feel like wrestling with that today so with the mascara you're gonna place it on your lash and you're gonna wiggle it and go up wiggle and go up to get all your lash and to separate your lashes as well. And it's best to have a mirror that's kind of facing down. And then you'll look down and wiggle and go up. This way you won't get any mascara on your lash, on your eyelid like I just did because I wasn't looking down enough. But that's okay because we can always go back and fix that with a Q-tip. So you'll let it dry and you'll get a Q-tip if you get a mascara anywhere and just wipe it off with the Q-tip after the mascara dries. Now, some people curl their lashes before, and I really, with my lashes, I really don't need to curl them, because they're, they're already kind of curly, it's just they're wild, so I just have to get some mascara to kind of tame them and make them all go some kind of way. So, we're done with mascara. So now for the eyebrows, I kind of like to do use one of two products either a powder and this is the lorac uh, mini pro powder and i like to use a dark brown and i would always use this espresso shade it's one of my favorites but um, i showed you this because you can just use a powder you don't have to get an expensive brow pencil to do your brows so um but this is an expensive powder so you can just get any brown powder, but this is the only brown powder that I use that I have on hand. But as a drugstore alternative, this is the CoverGirl Perfect Point Eyeliner Pencil in brown. I don't use it as an eyeliner pencil. I use it for my brows. So it's very creamy, very um, great product to use. Love, love, love. And then for the Lorac, it's very, very soft and buttery as well. So you can just choose which one you would like to do or which product you would like to use. For me, sometimes I do a powder, sometimes I do a 
pencil just depending on what I'm doing throughout the day. If I'm not really doing too much, then I'll use a powder. Um, if I'm doing a lot and I'll be in the heat, I'll probably use kind of like a pencil because this pencil is water resistant. So it'll help with the sweating and you know, your brows won't disappear throughout the day. So again, I like to get a small mirror so I can see what I'm doing. And I start out by, I was just brushing them and talking, but I start out by brushing them to go all the same way. And then I'll just do light strokes to fill in the gaps. So every so often, once you feel like it, just go through and make sure you're blending it with your brush, just sweeping through. If you mess up and get a spot too dark, you can always go back and just blend it out. Okay, so you can tell this eye obviously has been done and this one hasn't. So you can see I have an eyebrow right here. And I don't right here. So we're going to do the other eye. So next, we're going to talk about um, some setting powders. Um, so what I have right here is the NYX, or NYX. This is the NYC Smooth Skin Loose uh, Face Powder. And what you do is basically, it comes in a little puff. I hate the puff, but I just take a big blending brush and I just dip it in and I only put powder on my t-zone where I get oily the most so that's my forehead my nose my chin right here and a little bit on my cheeks not much and I just go down and I just sweep it all around So if you notice yourself after you're playing around with your makeup throughout the day, you're starting to get oily in other places, that just means you need to put the setting powder all over your face or in more places. But I really just get oily in this little T-zone right here. So next I'm going to go into different blushes. I'm really not going to talk about highlighting and contouring because that I think that's like a intermediate level type of makeup so this is again just really basic so um, the blushes I really like to use I have black radiance and a toasted almond and then I also have the elf blush palette which is really great the palette gives you a four options of beautiful blushes one has a shimmery, one is darker, and then you have these two lighter colors. Usually in the summertime, I just use this darker color just to give me some kind of color back to my face. Since I'm not doing any um, contouring or highlighting, I just like to use that. So the brush I use for it is Elf again. It's a angled blush brush, and this is the Studio line. So this will be like $3, and basically, you would smell and get it on the apples of your cheek and just dot it and once you get enough product on your cheek you'll start sweeping it back and blending it into the skin so if you ever find yourself putting too much on i went a little heavy-handed on this side just grab a big fluffy brush and you can get these this is the bh um blending or fluffy face brush that I got from bhcosmetics.com it was probably for a set of 12 no for a set of 14 it was like 12 11 dollars but you'll just continue to blend it out with the brush and you'll see eventually it'll kind of tame down so that's what I like to do if you make any kind of mistakes with your blush just get a fluffy brush and just blend it out so we're going to talk about setting your whole face for the day. So some setting sprays I like to use is the 
Wet n Wild Photo Finish Setting Spray. And then I have the L'Oreal Setting Spray as well. So it really doesn't matter which kind you use. Um, like for me, I have oily skin, like I said. So I like um, matte setting sprays. And both of these are matte setting sprays. So you'll just shake it and then just spray your face. I forgot about my lips. So Wet n Wild has some of the best affordable uh, matte lipsticks. I love matte, obviously. So this color is in Sandstorm. And I like it because it lasts all day. I'm not here for retouching up my face or anything like that. Once I leave for the day and finish my makeup, that's it. I don't want to do anything else to it. So... There we go. This is a great everyday color. It will go with anything. Oh, I just love it. So, just going to put that and just follow our natural lip line. And I always like to start at the bottom because it's easier for me. And then press my lips together. And then some of my bottom lipstick got on my top lip and I just go in and just fill in the rest. Oh, just look how pretty that is. And then that's it. This is probably what I would wear on just like a regular day if I'm running errands, going to the mall, hanging with girls. If you like this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you want me to do a more in-depth video on highlighting, highlighting and contouring, what I do, what I like, what I don't like, make sure you just tell me, give me a comment down below. And until next time, bye guys.